Who crucified Jesus? We did. What crucified Jesus? Self-righteous religion. Hard-hearted hypocrisy. But friend, the Bible teaches he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we're healed. Profound truth simply stated. This is Love Worth Finding with pastor, teacher, and author, Adrian Rogers. Take God's Word and find Isaiah chapter 53. We've been thinking about the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ. The question is being asked, and the title of my message this morning is this, Who Crucified Jesus? Find Isaiah chapter 53, and look with me in verses 5 and 6. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He, Jesus, was bruised, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, the question has been discussed over and over again who crucified Jesus? Well, let's ask and answer that question if we can. Uh, first of all, did the Jews crucify Jesus? Before you say that the Jews crucified Jesus, I want to remind you that his early disciples were Jews. The apostles were Jews. Peter, James, and John were Jews. A Jew uh, preached that great sermon on Pentecost. A Jew, the apostle Paul, was the mightiest missionary that ever lived. The forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ was a Jew. The early church was made up of Jews. There was not a Gentile in the bunch. Now indeed, some Jews participated in the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But friend, only ignorance would blame the Jews as the singular people who are responsible for the crucifixion. Now, one segment of the Jewish community at that time clamored for the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look up here and I want to tell you something. I would hate for Christianity to be judged by one segment of Christianity. I indeed would. We have more than our share of moral scandals in the church. Little would it behoove us to be pointing fingers at anyone else. And I want to say this also to any Jewish friends uh, that are listening. Any anti-Semitism in the world does not originate from the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, but from the wicked hearts of sinful men. Anti-Semitism, like all racism, is a distortion of the truth, and it needs to be condemned in all of its forms. For the past 2,000 years, Jews have suffered unmentionable persecution. It is a crime, and it seems to be a cancer that never seems to heal. The cross does not teach anti-Semitism. The cross teaches love. The cross teaches reconciliation. The cross teaches mercy. No Christian can ever hate anyone for whom Jesus died. Congregation, that was a good place for an amen. amen. All right, and I'll tell you something else. Speaking of good places, this is a good place and this is a good time to bless God's chosen people. For God said to Abraham concerning the Jews, I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. Did the Jews crucify Jesus? One segment of the Jewish community was there at the cross. Did the Romans crucify Jesus? Well, the Romans were the actual executioners. The soldiers were brutal. 
But in a sense, they were only pawns. They were obeying orders, orders that came from higher up. Jesus was crucified with Roman authority. But can we blame the Romans altogether? Can we blame Pilate? that compromising politician. Can we blame Pilate who tried to wash his lily white hands and protest his innocence? Was Pilate alone guilty of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ? No, you already know the answer. Not the Jews alone. Not the Romans alone, not the soldiers alone, not Pilate alone. The answer is, who crucified Jesus? He died for the sins of all mankind. I read to you the scripture again, Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Our sins were the nails that held him to the cross, and our hard hearts, the hammers, that drove those nails. Yours and mine, he died for our sins. But now wait a moment. Let's see if we can get more specific. Let's talk not about who crucified Christ as much as what crucified Christ. What hellish inclinations are in human nature in toto that caused Jesus to be crucified? I want you to leave Isaiah chapter 53, and I want you to turn to the book of Matthew. And let's go to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 27. Take your Bibles and turn to it, because you're going to find out that in Matthew chapter 27, God has arranged it that a cross section of humanity is there. We're going to see attitudes that crucify. We're going to see literally not who crucified Jesus, but what crucified Jesus? We're going to find the sin that lurks in your heart, in my heart, that crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we look at this 27th chapter, listen, as we look at this 27th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew and see the crowd at the cross, we're going to call the roll. And at this roll call at the cross, if you're listening, you'll hear your name. I want to mention seven things that crucified Jesus. I want you to write them down. First of all, self-righteous religion crucified Jesus. Self-righteous religion crucified Jesus. Matthew 27, 1 and 2. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Now these were the relig religious leaders. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. These were religious leaders. Many of them were what we would call Pharisees. You know who the Pharisees were? They were the most religious of the religions. They kept the Sabbath with such punctility and care that they would not even eat an egg that had been laid on Saturday. If they had a flea, they would not kill that flea on Saturday lest they be accused of hunting on the Sabbath. I'm not making this up. If they got attacked in the sole of their shoe. They could not take it out on the Sabbath, lest they be accused of working on the Sabbath. This was a religious crowd, but they still nailed Jesus up on the cross. Religion has never saved anybody. Most of the people in America need to turn from religion to Jesus Christ. Self-righteous religion crucified Jesus. If religion could have saved, Jesus never would have died. If you're enjoying this message from Adrian Rogers and would like to dig a little deeper into today's topic, we'd love to send you this free companion Bible study. Use the link above to request yours. 
What else crucified Jesus? Hard-hearted hypocrisy crucified Jesus. Look now in verses 3 through 5. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went away and hanged himself. Now, if you know anything about the Bible, you know that Judas was one of the 12 disciples who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ unto death. And he did it for 30 pieces of silver. Why did he do it? No ifs, ands, and buts about it. He was a first-class hypocrite. Judas never lost his salvation. He never had it. The Bible says Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. Judas was a hypocrite. Hypocrisy crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. Self-righteous religion did it. Hypocrisy, hard-hearted hypocrisy crucified the Lord Jesus. Thirdly, I want to tell you what else crucified Jesus. Cowardly compromise. Cowardly compromise. Look now in verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, talk, the governor now is Pilate, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? Now look, if you will, skip down to verse 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather that a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, listen to this now, I am innocent of this just person. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. I said a while ago that Pilate was a fence-straddling politician. Jesus to Pilate was an uncomfortable fact. He had Jesus on his hands. The inevitable, unavoidable Jesus was on his hands. He had to do something with Jesus. Now, don't, don't make Pilate some sort of a hero. Pilate sinned because he was a coward. God had spoken to him Pilate was a wise man in the flesh. He knew human nature. Look, if you will, in uh, verse 18. The Bible says that Pilate knew that for envy they had delivered Jesus. He knew that for envy they had delivered him. You see, the voice of reason had spoken to Pilate. Pilate was a coward. What crucified Jesus? Well, self-righteous religion crucified Jesus. What crucified Jesus? Hard-hearted hypocrisy crucified Jesus. What crucified Jesus? Cowardly compromise crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be a coward. Number four, thoughtless conformity crucified Jesus. Look, if you will, now in verse 20. But the chief priest and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas, and destroy Jesus. On that day, Pilate, trying to escape, gave the people a choice. He said, look, here's Barabbas, a notorious criminal, a murderer, a seditionist. Over here is Jesus Christ, and I'm going to release one of them. Which one do you want me to release? And the Bible says that the people chose Barabbas and said, crucify Jesus. Had you been there that day and asked these people, why did you do that? Why did you choose Barabbas over the Lord Jesus Christ? Why are you doing this? They would have said, well, our leaders say that's what we ought to do. Our leaders are persuading us that he ought to be crucified. And after all, it's always good to go along with the crowd. Well, friend, I want to tell you the crowd is most always wrong. Uh, these people uh, were just conformed to the crowd. Now you say, well, they didn't know better. Well, friend, ignorance is not innocence. They could have known better. They should have known better. Others knew bigger, better. The biggest cult in America is the cult of conformity. 
Jesus will reveal himself to you. I don't care what anyone else says. You can read all of the newspapers. You can listen to all the liberals. You can listen to all of the naysayers. You can let other people persuade you. Or you can say, oh God, show me about Jesus Christ. Friend, careless conformity crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the crowd mostly is going to hell. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Number five. Tell you what else crucified the Lord Jesus. Hard-hearted cruelty crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, if you will, in verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed. And by the way, when the, the Bible says reed, don't get the idea that this is just a stalk from a tree. It means a bamboo club. And smote him on the head. And after that they mocked him and took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. You cannot believe the cruelty unless you read it in the Scripture. These men who brutalized Jesus, who mocked him, who beat him, who whipped him, who scourged him, who finally nailed him to the cross were hard-hearted. The milk of human kindness had curdled in these people. They were brutal. As I said before, probably psychopathic, who took pleasure in giving pain. Hard-hearted. I want to ask you a question today. Are you a soldier at the cross or a soldier of the cross? You're one or the other. Hard-hearted cruelty crucified Jesus. What else crucified Jesus? Number six, casual indifference crucified Jesus. You may have been making a little list and saying, that's not, I'm not that one, I'm not that one, I'm not that one, I'm not that one. Well, now here's another group. Look, if you will, in Matthew 27, verse 36. And sitting down, they watched him there. Now, who is that? This speaks of the general crowd. They're not outwardly fighting Jesus. They are onlookers. They're looking at Jesus, not looking unto Jesus. Oh, they may have had some sentimental thought. In the other gospel, Luke says, they smoke their, their chest. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh. But they never lined up with Jesus. You see, it takes more than a sentimental gesture to save a soul. It takes more than a crocodile tear at his suffering to save a soul. Here are these people who are simply observing. Sitting down, they watched him there. Church attendance. A Sunday morning form of culture and entertainment. Complacency. Crucified Jesus. How sad it would be. How sad it would be for you to come this morning, hear this music on the cross, to hear the word of God from this blessed book and just simply say, oh, yes, that is sad indeed. Let me tell you seventhly what crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about who crucified Jesus and we're talking about what was in the who that caused it. Cynical skepticism crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice in verses 39 and following, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, ha, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself if thou be the son of God. Come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and the elders said, he saved others. Himself he cannot say, uh, he cannot say, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same into his teeth. 
Now what you have here is skepticism. And our world is full of skepticism. First of all, they misquoted his words, saying, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. He was speaking of the temple of his body. Number two, they mocked his deity, if you are the Son of God. Number three, they minimized his death. Come down from the cross and save thyself. They were cynics. A cynic is somebody who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Cynicism is perhaps the worst of all of these things that I mentioned. They're skeptics, cynical skepticism. Listen, friend, a man is not a sinner because he's a skeptic. Now listen carefully. He is a skeptic because he's a sinner. Cynicism, skepticism comes out of the heart. You say, well, I have intellectual problems. No, you don't. You have dirty, rotten sin. Beware lest it be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. You say, well, I can't believe. No, no, no. You will not believe. You say, well, I know an intellectual who doesn't believe the Bible. I know some intellectuals who do. You say, well, I know some foolish people who believe the Bible. I know some foolish people who don't. It has nothing to do with it. Friend, what we believe is not contrary to reason. It is beyond reason. Why is it? that someone like the mighty Apostle Paul would believe in Jesus Christ because he's real. Friend, don't you let your skepticism take you to hell. These are attitudes that crucify. This is what nailed Jesus to the cross. It's right there in the 27th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Now, let me just wrap it up. In spite of all of this, in spite of all these attitudes, God allowed his darling son to die in agony and blood. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32 that God spared not his own son. Friend, what was this? This is judgment at its surest. Now put on, as my teacher used to say, your thinking cap. God spared not his own son. Now when the sin of the world was upon the Lord Jesus Christ, God did not spare Jesus. Are you listening? If when Jesus Christ was bearing my sin, God did not spare him, what makes you think that God will spare you if you reject Jesus? This is justice at its surest. Number two, this is love at its greatest. If there were ever a promise that God would have reneged on, if there were ever a promise that God would say, I've changed my mind, it would be this one, to let Jesus die. And if God kept that promise, friend, you can bank on it. He'll keep every other promise. God spared not his own son. And this is grace at its fullest. God spared not his own son, but delivered him up freely for us all. How shall he not also with him also freely give us all things? Friend, if God would give Jesus, there's nothing else he would withhold. Would you agree to that? Nothing else he would withhold. If somehow you were to talk me into delivering my son up to you to be crucified, then you would say, can I have his football and his bicycle? I'd say, of course. Of course. If I would give you Steve, you can have the rest. Friend, with Jesus, you get it all. Who crucified Jesus? We did. What crucified Jesus? Self-righteous religion? Hard-hearted hypocrisy? All of these other things. But friend, the Bible teaches he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. Aren't you glad for the cross? Aren't you glad for Jesus? Aren't you glad that salvation is a gift? None deserve it. None can earn it. Any can receive it. And Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. 